Hey guys! Hi! It's moving season in Japan and we're moving! Yay! Okay. I know it's really hard for you guys to read my emotions, but I'm very very excited for this. And since we're going through all of this, we thought we'd tell you how you can look for apartments in Japan. Yeah, and some of the things about looking for apartments here are like really different from how we do things in America, yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're gonna go over those parts too. Yep. First of all, if you just want to look at apartments, you can use many different websites, and we used one called sumo.jp, so it's all in Japanese. But if you're trying to get an apartment on your own, you probably at least need to be able to understand enough to use this website. Maybe. How you can use it is search by area, and you can select prefectures, and then any or all the cities inside that prefecture. So for example, Aichi Prefecture, and then I'll just select this one city. This opens up a page with a bunch of apartments for rent in that city. You can adjust your search for specific requirements on the side, like minimum and maximum price. Minimums can be as low as maybe 20,000 yen a month, or very roughly $200. Those places are likely to be places like one-room apartments for university students. High-end apartments can be thousands of dollars. Apartments inside big cities will obviously be more expensive and smaller than apartments outside the city, whereas apartments in more rural areas will usually be a lot cheaper. June and I picked a reasonably priced apartment at 61,000 yen a month, or about $610. There was also a room on the first floor a little cheaper at $580 a month. Top floors can often be more expensive because they have better views and they're less noisy. If you click on this, you can refine your search even more by selecting things like the type of material you want the building to be made out of. I'd recommend tekkin or tekkotsu, which is reinforced concrete. This is the least likely type of building to collapse during a big earthquake, and well, Japan is always going to have big earthquakes, so at least you can try to be prepared. You can also select for things like places with parking lots, which will cost extra money every month, or places that may allow pets, which will also likely cost more. It was really important to me in June to find a place that allowed us to have pets. However, those aren't very common, so this reduced the number of apartments available to us by like 10 times. Yeah. And of those apartments that allow pets, a lot of those actually only allow dogs and not cats since cats can be more smelly and or like, scratch balls, like, like the yeah they can mess up the apartments a little bit yeah. more <laughs> and a lot of apartments that allow pets are usually more run down and they're not as nice looking yeah not at all you have to pay a lot of extra money but you can sometimes find special pet apartments where they specifically built that apartment for people with pets so like outside they'll have a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. little shed that's <laughs> specifically for washing your pet i would be surprised i've never seen something like that before. yeah we looked at one that had little cat doors on <laughs> all of the yeah. doors in the apartment which was really cute once you find an apartment you like you have to do something that i think is different from your country here, all apartments go through a middleman, which is a real asset office. You can't just contact the owner unless you know the owner. So if you find a apartment you like, you go to that real asset office and you talk to them and they will take care of everything for you. They will even drive you to the apartment you like so you can look at it too. Yeah, and they'll do things like serve you tea and they will help you look for other apartments and stuff. But the kicker is that you're paying for all of this. <laughs> of course. You're like paying a lot. It typically costs one month worth of rent, maybe a little bit more that you have to pay to the real estate offices for their help. Like even if they don't do anything, if you pick out your apartment on your own online and all you do is go to their office and sign the paper, you still have to pay them hundreds of dollars. Like I was so shocked when I found this out and I was like really upset. I was like, I don't want their help. <laughs> if I have to pay them $600, I don't, I don't need that. I can do it myself. Something else you have to keep in mind is that there are a lot of different real estate companies, but not every apartment is connected to all of them. So if you find two different apartments online that you like to visit, but they're both through different companies, then you have to go to each office separately to have them drive you to their apartment. But don't worry, you don't pay them anything unless you get an apartment. And also this is one area of Japan where you are fairly likely to run into some problems as a foreigner. There are a decent number of apartment owners who will not rent to foreigners, like at all. They have reasons for this, like the language differences, or they've had foreign tenants in the past who caused problems, or like they left the country without paying all of their rent, or they messed up the apartments and stuff. It was a little easier for me to find an apartment because I had June, so he could take care of everything for us. It wasn't just me looking for an apartment by myself. But even still, when we were applying for our apartment, our real estate agent still had to call the owner, and he was like, by the way, the wife is a foreigner? 
but she spent a lot of time in Japan and she speaks Japanese. And like he made this call when I was sitting right in yeah. front of him, and yeah. like, it made me feel really bad about myself. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Facebook moving into apartments here also kind of suck a lot. Sometimes you have to pay something called key money to the owner of the apartment you're moving into, which is equal to one or two months of rent, and you don't get that money back. It's like a monetary gift. And there could also be things like cleaning fees, renovation fees, yeah. insurance fees, fees for changing the locks, or very frequently a security deposit. Mm. And the security deposit is something that would be equal to usually like one to three months worth of rent. Yeah. But it's different from America in that you don't automatically get all of it back if you don't damage the apartment. Apparently here in Japan, you get less of it back the longer you stay in your apartment. Yeah. Very frequently, if you want to own a pet, you have to pay additional key money or security deposits. We paid an extra $1,800 just for the right to own a pet. Three months of in rent. In our apartment. Yeah. yeah, three months worth of rent. Many apartments also require you to have a guarantor who is someone who's going to pay for your rent or something in case something happens to you and you can't pay for it yourself. <laughs> But a lot of apartments these days don't let you just go get a signature from your dad or a relative anymore. You actually have to go through a guarantor company, which is a company who will do that service for you. You just have to pay them extra money, usually something like half a month's worth of rent. And when you're looking at rent, that main number usually isn't the final number either. There's also often something like a monthly common area service fee or sometimes other things as well. Yeah. So for us, just to move into our apartment, it costs us about $4,000 even though our rent is $600. And even if we didn't get an apartment where pets are allowed, we would still have to pay about $2,000 or something. But keep in mind that all of these fees and even rent can be negotiable. Mm -hmm. So a good real estate agent will try to talk the owner down on some of these things. For example, we got our first month of rent free. Mm -hmm. And even then, it is still yeah, so these fees and everything can make moving to a new place less exciting. It's but we need a cat. Ugh. Anyway, this is all of the basic information you should need to know to get an apartment in Japan. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Yep. Thanks for watching. Yeah, bye. bye. Katie! Oh.